very interesting conversation with Dr. Li Meng Yin. She's a Chinese virologist known for her publication and interviews where she describes some, I believe, firsthand observations uh, of the behavior of the Chinese government that should be of concern to most people. I, uh, again, she is a virologist. She works in a virology lab and did so in China as well. Uh, I've heard her on a Twitter spaces before and became intrigued. And so I thought it'd be really interesting to hear her story. Susan has been very concerned about this topic since the early days of the pandemic. And I thought this would be a great source to try to I'm not saying I'm going to set the record straight, but let's just see what a good source has to tell us. So let's get right to it. Our laws as it pertain to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it, I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Dr. Yan, in addition to being a whistleblower, has a, 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 I think it's a radio show, The Voice of Dr. Yan, Y-A-N, it's spelled, on America Out Loud Radio Network, America Out Loud Radio Network, that is broadcast weekly, Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Time, that is at americaoutloud.com, so it's a sort of a podcast. Uh, and Susan, this is something that had been of concern and interest to you for quite some time, right? Yes. Yes, and she's been reading. She's been diligently reading. Well, uh, not diligently, but I'm. I was a history major at UCLA, and I found Chinese history to be really interesting. I. It was probably one of the hardest subjects I ever studied, and I always did poorly. But I kept taking the classes because I wanted to understand more. Still don't understand it, but what I do take away is that for many many years they've been aggressive towards their people and it's just you know they're they want power in the hands of very few and and i think economically you know we were sort of as americans we were you know in their clutches they've you know had most of our industry there and now we're seeing the repercussions of of what it's like to be dominated by them i mean the economy is going down people are dying and now more people are dying in China. And it just, to me, it's really interesting because um, I I don't understand why people want to be communist. You know, like that's just not my thing. I study Russian history too, never really got it. But I'm hoping that the Chinese people can have a voice like Dr. Yan. I think it's important. And anything that happened that we need to know, we should know. And okay. it shouldn't be hidden. Let's start there. Please welcome Dr. Li Meng Yang. There you are. Thank you and welcome. Uh oh, no sound. Hello, can you hear me? There you are. We got you now. There you go. Excellent. We have you now. So I, I have just some basic questions. Where was your training and what was your training in? Okay, I was trained as a medical doctor in China from two top medical universities. And then I, because I want to do research, so I moved to the University of Hong Kong to pursue the research. And since I stay in Hong Kong, uh, in the last five years before I came to the United States, I moved into the uh, virology lab that is a WHO reference lab, also the state K emerging infectious disease lab. So I was trained there uh, as a postdoc, also as a virologist, and my, my focus is on immunology and vaccines. And were you, what, what kind of projects, did, did, were there any projects underway that, that concerned you while you were there? Uh, when I was there, I usually did the influenza vaccine uh, development. I own my own uh, vaccine patent, uh, which is um, pending in, United, in the United States. And also before I leave, because that was, uh, there was over three months of the outbreak at that time. I leave on, uh, in, in April of 2020. So before that, I also published two COVID-19 virus research. And then one is published on Lancet infectious disease 
which tell people the viral load can uh, predict the severity of the disease. And also the second one is, I'm the co-author of Nature magazine, and that is the first article to tell people the high transmissibility and using the proper animal model hamster. High transmissibility of COVID-19 or just of coronavirus generally? Were you were working with COVID something called COVID-19? That's, that's yeah. COVID-2 because we got the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus isolated and also amplified in our lab since end of January 2020. After that, we use it to do a lot of uh, uh, experiment in the PSL3 lab and then publish that is one of my paper. And since I left the series, we'll remove my from our other articles. And, and what was the intent of your research? What, what was your sort of, why were you going down that path? What was that, what problem was that going to solve in your mind? Uh, do you mean the investigation of COVID or you mean the whole my research background? The COVID. So what do you mean? The COVID, actually, when I start the COVID, that is a sick, the secret investigation, the confidential investigation, which is not as published as I told. So at, uh, back to 31st of December 2019, I was asked by my supervisor, WHO expert, uh, Prof. Liu Peng in the University of Hong Kong to do the research based on my own network in mainland China about the novel coronavirus in Wuhan. And I used my own network involving the uh, laboratories, hospitals, and even the military uh, labs to uh, show that actually the thing is getting worse and worse in China and the government was hiding the uh, facts. And after that, the thing uh, got changed because first I was warned not to tell anything, to keep silent. Uh, if not, I will be disappeared if I cross the red line. And also I say the WHO experts, my boss and my big boss, Malik Paris, all of them, although they have, the, this is their responsibility in the reference lab to tell the report the situation to WHO for the uh, region of the public health crisis and within 24 hours. However, they all turn to help China to cover it up. So that's why based on my investigation, when I get more and more stunning evidence, I can't wait. And finally, I decided to uh, deliver this message to a famous anti-CCP YouTube blogger based in New York who speak in Chinese. I let him to release this information to warn China to stop it, to, to control the things as soon as possible. And that's be basically the beginning of my story. And so who was the individual that came to you and said, you're going to be disappeared if you talk, who, who, gets, who my, delivers, my and, and uh, that's some, that's my, another doctor at the hospital or that's a virology lab right. director. And why, why is he, yeah. who is giving him that directive? Who's telling him that? He, he didn't tell me who gave him, but I'm sure that come from his experience. So he is my boss. Actually, I respect him very much when I was in Hong Kong U. I worked with him for five years. Dr. Liu Peng, he's still a very famous P, uh, WHO expert because of his uh, work, his achievement, even from SARS-1 period uh, back to 2003. And uh, uh, when he told me that you have to keep silence, and uh, I asked him, why do you want me to do that? And he said, because China government won't let any of us, he means Hong Kong uh, experts, to know the fact, and you only can know the things from official sources. And he also added that, oh, I don't think, I, I don't want it, uh, it would be like what happened during SARS-1. And uh, later when I report him the things, I remember he also told me, oh, come on, they did the same thing as what they have done in SARS-1. So, you know, in SARS-1, they cover it up. Why do they, so, so tell me what you thought was happening in China and what the official story was, and why was it important in their minds to cover it up, do you think? Uh, briefly, now I can tell you that when they need to cover it, they definitely have a special purpose. For Chinese Communist Party, because I was born there and grew up to uh, almost 30, 
years old. So I can tell you when they try to cover it up, that's for their, the uh, one thing is for their stability. That means they have to control the citizens. And another thing is they have uh, other uh, the strategy against the foreign countries, especially uh, like America is always listed as a primary enemy in CCP's documents. So the thing is when the whole outbreak happened, now we go back to say China cover it up and China lied to, the, uh, to everyone about the origin and China suppress all, all the whistleblowers. The thing is they want, at that time, they don't want you to be aware of the whole outbreak. And later when I want that through the media, the media to Chinese people that uh, this is actually already become a big crisis. And if you don't control it on time, then this will be bigger outbreak and even pandemic. CCP really has done some response because I listed the real backbone of the SARS-CoV-2. I also talk about some of the top secret, which based on my investigation. So they, they thought someone knows that they have to change. But what did they change? They just admit it's human to human transmission. They increase the patient's number for triple, and then they lock down. But they intentionally allow some people who may be very innocent to carry the virus out of China, and the virus was spread all over the world and become the pandemic. And after that, you see China government celebrates the COVID trophy. All these kind of top scientists from military or civilian labs, including my previous lab in Hong Kong, they the top ones get awards because they either involved into the develop of this virus or they get into the cover up as an academic fabrication altogether. So the thing is now you will see that when we go back to the real origin of COVID-19 virus, we will see that based on evidence I will explain to you, it was made in military labs and also it is a product of the military civil fusion project, which is actually a novel uh, bioweapon. I ca uh, call it as unrestricted bioweapon. So as a weapon, it has special purpose. And that's why China government have to hide the top secret, especially when it creates such casualties. Okay, so um, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. One of the things that struck me when the outbreak occurred in Wuhan that we suddenly see trucks rolling down the street, spraying some disinfectant on the streets. Seems completely ludicrous. Uh, men in white suits running around, tackling people and things. Uh, at, at very minimum, it, it, I, I'm wondering what that was, first of all. What, what were we looking at there? What do you think that was? Uh, we call those people in white PPE as big white. And that is kind of people composed of the medical uh, staff and also uh, volunteers, uh, actually government recruited and paid them, and also the law enforcement uh, teams. So those are the people who conducted different uh, tasks, including uh, disinfect the city because China was claiming the uh, zero COVID policy. They mean it they claim that they will eliminate even the last one virus in the city. And uh, also, right. we have another very, very important task. But you're there. laughing, you're, you're, you're laughing, and, and I would laugh too, because that's a silly thing to say. But, but yeah. it, it, it did not look like medical procedures. It, to me, no. it looked like show, showboating for political purposes. Is that what that is? It's more about political purpose. It shows to you that they are busy, and also that make profits because all these people they will get the uh, taxpayers' money to do these jobs. It's not for free. Taxpayers pay uh, pay them, and also because this is CCP's uh, policy from Xi Jinping. So if you know the Chinese history back to Chairman Mao's period, they are going to kill the four harmful creatures, including the rat. So the, how could you kill all the rat in the country? But that's a similar thing repeated here now. That is clearly for political purpose. And also, as I said, the most important thing for them to do is to 
control people because they give people the digital control system on their phone. You can even not go out of your apartment without the, this kind of traffic light code. And those people are helping government to control you. That is most uh, important. And also, uh, as I told you, for CCP, the, what they care most uh, domestically is how to control people efficiently. Were, were you part of the Communist Party when you were there? No, I'm not a Communist no. Party member. I'm just, you, that, that, I, that was a serious question. Is, is it funny? To, I would think a doctor or somebody like that would be somebody likely to be in the party, no? First, uh, I mean, I have to tell you that I rejected many opportunities to join this party uh, because one thing I really don't understand is although we were brainwashed uh, from our maybe baby time listening to this kind of songs, they tell you CCP equal to mom, mom equal to the best one. So when you love your mom, you should love CCP. However, when you grow up, when they pick the elite people to be the CCP member, I just don't understand how could people achieve the communism. Because from the things I learned, they said that is a, a wonderful, heaven-like world. Everyone shares the things to each other. But when I was a student, I said, my classmate even won't share me his pencil. How could I imagine a place that everyone share everything, happily live together? And the one thing is, uh, when they, uh, one time when they asked me whether I want to join it, I just asked a question to that uh, classmate who is a member. I said, if I join it, how could I quit it? And they were so shocked. They said, how could everyone ask something? You, you can never quit it. Why do you want to quit it? And then I just felt something wrong. If I was going to join some party, but I cannot choose to quit it, it sounds more like the gun. So that's why yeah. I, yeah. I realized I can't be a member. Now you, we've, we've. I'm with her. I know we're getting we're getting quite a case built here. Um, you, you've mentioned how this was this zero COVID policy. You you laughed at it, and so did I. We talked about how the procedures they were taking had no medical purpose to them. They were strictly political. How is it that our public health figures sent experts over to China and were were persuaded by the Chinese teams that they actually had achieved zero COVID doing things that were silly. How did we fall victim to that? What do you think happened there? I mean, the thing is China don't want to get suggestions from your expert. And even according to Xi Jinping, he won't promote his policies, his thought all over the world. So that's why in China, I mean, it's, you know, communist country has very strict uh, structure. It's a Leninist organization. You listen to your boss and you do everything the party wants you to do. Have to show your lawyer even it's a very anti-human uh, uh, actions. So the thing is, everyone now have to show their lawyer to Xi Jinping. If they dare to admit there are any uh, problem in the zero COVID policy, that would make Xi Jinping lose his face. And that will be the biggest problem for these official or experts. So the thing is, in China, we all know CCP members know they are lying, and we know they are lying, and they know we know they are lying, but it doesn't matter. Because but why didn't control. we know? Why didn't we? Why couldn't we say they were lying? I was watching videos from thousands of miles away and I could tell they were lying. Why couldn't our health officials understand they were being lied to? If your health officials don't compromise with them, I'm worried that they may have no chance to go back to your country. And the thing is, initially, if they show that they are so suspicious, they won't get a visa to go to China. But they came back with enthusiasm about the Chinese policies and adopted the policies completely. How they could not have seen through that is mind boggling. It's just beyond me that they could not have seen that they were they were actualizing policies that had no basis in the history of medicine anywhere in the history of medicine. And suddenly they've decided that Xi Jinping's policies are magic and are going to cure the world, and they foisted it on the whole world. 
Yeah, that's something also make me uh, uh, shocked because these people basically learned all the things from China in a very good CCP style. And I know they, they compromise. And also I know China can stress them or manipulate them. But what I have to tell you is the CCP Xi Jinping system really give more benefits to the authorities, to the certain experts, to the top people who have powers. So these people, they realize, aha, uh -huh, that would be a perfect system we, we want to adopt it to our country because that makes us from the common official suddenly become a king of a lot of slaves. So that is a fact. They know what they can get. When they work with China, they get a lot of benefits. When they learn from China, they get more benefits from your society. And the thing is, your society, for example, America, is very domestic. And it takes time for people to realize uh, this is something wrong. And also people will take, uh, discuss and find us a way and maybe uh, be a new bill and then, then change the whole things. But if you learn from China, you see, everything Xi Jinping said, he said zero COVID. It was strict zero COVID. He said open it, the whole country reopened. So this kind of quick change is so efficient for them. This can bring a lot of wealth or other benefits behind it. And this can be a very good way to further control your society. So they don't mind to adapt it starting from the health system and the little by little even to your government. Like I say now, you they learn not only health policies from China, they also learn how to control the free of the, uh, the speech freedom. And also they learn how, uh, how to control other people. They even want to promote this kind of traffic like uh, credit code in many countries like Australia. So many things they are learning from China. Does that surprise you that these really, um, you called them, I think, non-human or inhuman policies are not humane, maybe, or, or certainly not humanitarian policies of the Chinese government are, are being so widely distributed? And, and let me ask, on, on top of that, it seems like the people here are continuing to suppress you. The people that have taken and adopted some of these crazy policies now are going to behave like the CCP and suppress you here in America. Is that happening? Yes, it keep, uh, I mean, it's keep happening. And also uh, not only from America, but also from other countries. I know the interview I gave sometimes uh, just pull out. Uh, like today, I know one YouTube channel was told to remove my interview just because I told Chinese people when now China is lack of medicine, the government suppressed the medicine. So you can try to manage to find your own drugs like hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin to save your lives. Then this is pulled out from YouTube China. So this kind of suppression is what I told you, disappear. This is a type of disappear. People don't know me. Whatever I tell you, you cannot hear. Or they try to convince you I'm a liar or I'm a just conspiracist, then that will destroy my credits. The thing is, I have destroyed many people's uh, benefits, and especially CCP. That is the second biggest uh, economic uh, organization in the world. So it has a lot of power to influence and manipulate media. And so they have already done it in US for decades. So I'm, I'm shocked, but I know that would happen before CCP is removed. This not this will not only happen to me, it will happen to you, it will happen to our audience as long as you won't resist. That's why when Susan initially tells that she doesn't understand why CCP, uh, CCP can let people uh, stay there and the people uh, kind of accept this kind of uh, this system. It's not because people accept it. One thing is people are brainwashed. And the other thing is government put su uh, superpower to control you, surveillance you, and disappear you once you wake up. I agree. <laughs> I'm going to ask Susan to... to no, I, I know that they don't want to be in this situation. Why they are is because they've been in it for so many years and they've 
they learn to you know live like that. it's like Cuba when you go to Cuba they they're used to communism there and yeah. but but what I am surprised is that America wanted to be communistic and go with that I type am of shock and non medical that's the thing that that's blowing my mind and I knew it from the beginning these are non medical interventions they I could see it from the beginning. Nowhere in the history of medicine have we ever done anything like that. And the first place you saw it was in Wuhan. They were doing it there. Now it turns out we have actual documentation that Dr. Fauci sent a team over there. That team was convinced, came back with glowing reports, and we adopted it, and we influenced the rest of the world. That is, dis it is mind-blowing. And when they're, the and they're really written, good at the system, like the system of making people believe things are true that aren't coming from China. Like well, we're gonna, they we're got into our media, they got into, yeah. they got in our heads. It was, inc well, it's very impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. Well, we're, we're going to talk <laughs> about all that. Let, let me ask this before we're, we're going to get after the break, we're going to get into what your theory is about the origins of the virus. And we'll get into some of the weeds of that. And uh, you've mentioned it specifically as a bioweapon. And I want to hear some evidence for that. But let me ask you this, this question before we go to break. What's motivating you? Why are you doing this? Why are you, is, if, if anybody were suspicious about your motives, your motives, like if somebody would go, hey, what's she doing? Why is she doing this? How, how would you answer them to persuade them that you're, you have some specific motivation or goal in mind by being so outspoken? I don't want to persuade anyone just because I'm a doctor, I'm a virologist. When I see what happened in Wuhan, when I know it's through my investigation, I know I can't wait. And if I don't tell anything, when the pandemic, when this kind of, kind of disaster happen, I will be guilty for my whole life. That's my motive. That's where it started though. What, what are you doing now? Now I keep telling first that the people need to know it because a uh, Chinese Communist Party has studied your society very well even in their documented uh, articles, they have analyzed that in U.S., this system, once you want to do something, people have to, majority of people have to accept it. So CCP try to use many of the fake theories to uh, blind you, to block you to understand the real origin of COVID-19. Then you won't uh, ask your government to hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable. So I have to fight against the, all these false theories and I have to let people know the real origin of COVID, not only public, but also the uh, intelligence community and legislators. And also uh, based on this pandemic, China has moved forward. They become more and more aggressive. And so that's why, because I have established the credibility uh, in China. So we got a lot of Chinese sources they deliver the, even the top military intelligence to us because they trust us that they know we will send it to America. Uh, people or release it to the American media. And we have done that. So that's why we keep working with the network in China and also provide the update of the top intelligence for you to understand what Xi Jinping want to do and you can prevent it in advance. Are you scared? Scare won't help. So usually I don't feel scared. <laughs> the thing is, sometimes are you, are you, I will. Are you, fear, are you fearful for your family usually, or do you leave anybody behind? I leave my parents. I leave my grandparents. I leave all the relatives in China. And they are all controlled by CCP. The moment I escape from Hong Kong, I have no idea. I only can cut off my connections. And I know they use my husband as the uh, tool to uh, hunt me in the United States. This is also very typical CCP style. They call it as fox hunt uh, operation. So I, I don't feel fear. I will pray for my family, but uh, you know, fear won't help me to do these things. Only I can pray that we can remove this regime as soon as possible. Then people will get free. And for me, sometimes I would be a little bit nervous because I would feel that CCP is too tiny if I don't do more. So I maybe they will have more chance to cheat, cheat the world and achieve their goals. 
So these are the things usually I feel. Are you a freedom fighter? Uh, I think so, because the ultimate goal I'm fighting for now is for the freedom uh, for Chinese people. And also we know once Chinese people have no freedom, U.S., uh, I mean, Americans will lose their freedom soon because this is a greedy, aggressive regime. They will purchase to you, uh, they will approach to you. What led to this change of heart as you grew up? How did you come to this place of being a freedom fighter, do you think? I did, I never planned that. Before I escaped, my plan is how to finish my job well, get good publication and become maybe assistant professor, finally professor, uh, maybe just in the University of Hong Kong. I love Hong Kong. But the thing was changed from 2019. CCP government destroyed Hong Kong, the place I love so much, the place I become citizen there. And that totally, I mean, make me wake up, you know, if for the Chinese people, even you just want to stay in Hong Kong, I mean, you give, compared to America, already lack of uh, freedom and democracy, but government still won't allow you to have this kind of peace. They just want to grab you and control you all. And so I see a lot of brave people, they fight for freedom, fight for the uh, security in Hong Kong. And so I, I really get inspired. And later, when I see the virus and when I did this investigation, I just feel, yeah, now I already know the evilness of CCP. And now I also know the uh, truth of this outbreak, uh, of this virus outbreak. And it's my time. I have to do something to change it. Do you have a supportive network of Hong Kong freedom fighters that support you here? Oh, uh, no, no. I was just, uh, I'm just, uh, how to say, I, I'm sing, uh, the single in, uh, investigator based in Hong Kong at that time to do this. And also, uh, before I came to U.S., I don't think, except for CCP's network, I don't think anyone else in Hong Kong know what I have done. Okay. So we're going to take a little break. Uh, Susan, we come back. I'm going to give you a chance to talk to Dr. Yen for a second, and then we're going to get into the... Every, oh, really? Well, I want you Everybody's to... Everybody's crying in the crowd. Uh, it's, they're all, it's pretty intense. They love her story. It's pretty intense. And, and the fact... Are intelligence... Are American intelligence officials... I, you probably can't say yes or no, but are, I'll ask it. Are they talking to you? Many. Okay. No, uh, okay. Are, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> many are? <laughs> many intelligence officers are talking to you? Yes? Yeah, many, many. Many, good. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Um, that's what she said. Yeah, I want to make sure that's what's happening, because if not, we need to help her talk to some people. Um, okay, so we'll take a little break, uh, and then I'll give Susan a, a chance to see what has boiled up, bubbled up for her as a result of hearing <laughs> know, your story. I'm good. I think you might want to take calls, too, because somebody out there is probably going to be very interested in well, asking questions. Well, it's going to take, we, I, we still have a big story to tell okay, where okay. this thing came from. So take a break. Be right back. Genucel has so many products that Susan and I love. Their XV Moisturizer locks in moisture, making dry spots a thing of the past, which is especially great with the colder weather, of course. And with the immediate effects, too, you can see these results in as little as 12 hours. Guaranteed or your money back. Susan loves Genucel's Vitamin C Serum, the new deep correcting serum with lactic acid that hydrates your skin and reduces fine lines while preventing future wrinkles from forming. Don't believe me? Listen to Susan. I am a snob when it comes to using products on my face. The dermatologist makes a ton of money from me. But when I was introduced to Genucel, I was so happy because it's so affordable and it works great. I was introduced to the Ultra Retinol Cream, which I love at night. All the eye creams are amazing. People notice my skin all the time, and I'm so excited because it's actually working. Take advantage of this New Year's promotion by going to Genucel.com and getting 60% off now with a complimentary gift set when you subscribe to my favorite package at genucel.com slash drew. All orders are upgraded to free shipping for the rest of the season. Use code drew at checkout for an extra 10% off your entire order. That is genucel.com slash drew. 
G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash D-R-E-W. My guest is Philip Patrick. He is a precious metal specialist, trains at University of Redlands. He has spent years as a wealth manager at Citigroup, and his current position is with Birch Gold Group. So gold has always been uh, somewhat of a safe haven, particularly in times of great turmoil, uh, much like our present moment, I imagine. Gold has always traditionally been a safe haven asset. Gold specifically has, has always been about wealth preservation, right? Gold has always held its buying power. You can look at as far back as you'd like in history. In biblical times, one ounce of gold would buy somebody 400 loaves of bread. And today it does the same thing. So it's a store of value. But I would say in times like this, as you mentioned, it's particularly important when you're dealing with things like 40 year high inflation, uh, you know, the air that's coming out of a stock market bubble. These times in particular tend to drive gold and silver up quite significantly. If things are different, the solution needs to be different as well. So I encourage everyone to get informed. And we have a lot of good information here to help your listeners. Just a reminder, I am not a financial advisor and I do not give out financial advice nor investing advice. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of satisfied customers. Check them out now. Visit birchgold.com slash Drew and secure your future with gold. Do it now. Hey, we are back. Uh, Susan has uh, urged me to go straight back to interview with Dr. Yen because this is so fascinating. There we are. So let's uh, let's talk about the virus itself. Now, you said you have a story to tell about where it came from, what it is, why it was designed, who designed it, and what's up next. <laughs> so I'll let you start. Yeah, so this is a long theory and because this includes a lot of intelligence and scientific smoking gun evidence. So briefly, I would say that if you want to know the detail, please check my three-year reports, which is a pin uh, tweet on my Twitter account, and I published them in, on Zenodo since September 2020 to March 2021 with several other very good scientists. And what I can briefly let you know is the whole story is actually just CCP and especially when Xi Jinping become the chairman since 2012, they developed the by weapon and they put it as center of the Chinese uh, national strategy. So basically, that there was a doc, there is a document written written by the PLA generals talking about um, Xi Jinping uh, uh, raise up the eleven factors of the national strategy and ten of them released uh, related to the uh, bio weapon. Actually, they called it as biosecurity. And then another one is nuclear, uh, nuclear weapon. So they, they said nuclear weapon can be used to guarantee your bioweapon program. And they use all these kind of fancy words to package all the things they are going to do. And also since 2012, everything become accelerating. And also uh, Xi Jinping asked his team to reorganize the whole structure. Then the whole uh, system become initially military civilian fusion and then become military dominant. Finally, it's very efficient for them to get the novel bioweapons. And in this bioweapon system, there is a very good candidate is coronavirus because based on CCP's study uh, in 2015, you may heard about one book named uh, SARS-CoV-1, now Nature Origin and the uh, novel uh, genetic uh, bio weapon against the human. That was first uh, revealed by my team and uh, cited in my third year report. In that book, they said the bio weapon general said they have, uh, they believe even SARS 1 was not from nature. And also, the coronavirus is a very good candidate for the next generation of uh, bio weapon. And why this is good? Because uh, this is a uh, a uh, bio weapon can be uh, can carry different functions, and also uh, the best thing is this won't be a traditional bio weapon. For example, if you give anthrax, and then people can quickly identify this is on the list of bio weapon. But coronavirus is not on the list of bio weapon, and also this can be a low death rate novel bio weapon, which means 
uh, lower uh, death rate is lower than two percent. So it doesn't fit traditional concept of bioweapon. It won't cause a large casualty immediately in the battlefield. But this can slowly destroy the uh, enemy society, especially when it gets someone hurt. For example, one patient may take three other uh, labor force to take care of him. That means the enemy will lose four labor force immediately. And when they take over that uh, regime, they can still have at least a three labor force uh, for them to work. So basically, this is a continuous uh, strategy for them. And then they also said once this kind of novel uh, weapon based on coronavirus, uh, they believe this will be uh, realized by some scientists. And the scientists can say this is not from nature because they want to make it look like from nature. But they said once some uh, certain scientists uh, pointed out this is not from nature, then there will be the way to using propaganda and lies to cover it up or just deny it. So basically, this is the textbook to tell you how they are going to develop this kind of novel bioweapon using coronavirus, the basic theory. And I define it as unrestricted bioweapon because this is has no restriction of bottom line of humanity and no restriction of their tactics. They are going to use all the method to cover it up, deny it, uh, including the compromised scientists and medical uh, organizations. And also after that, I mean, not after, I mean, almost the same time, because from CCP's, uh, during CCP before Xi Jinping, there are already this kind of study, but Xi Jinping make it more efficient. So that's why until 2015 to 2017, one team led by a PLA scientist, Wang Changjun, based in East China near Shanghai uh, from Nanjing uh, military CDC, uh, they have checked uh, part of the wild place in East China in Zhejiang province, and they found some bad coronavirus, and they named it as ZC45. And also there is a twin-like virus named ZXC21, uh, almost 99% identical. And this bat was from Zhoushan city. So they called it Zhoushan bat coronavirus, ZC45 and ZXC21. And they have, uh, managed to successfully uh, culture this virus in the labs. And then they also published some articles. They said, mm, this virus can potentially infect the brain of the mammal and potentially can have the outbreak risk. So basically, from that time, this was the one of the best candidates for their bioweapon uh, study. And also because for coronavirus, there are no other team successfully get such perfect uh, virus for the backbone. So later, this was sent to different labs. Why I said it's different labs? Because based on my scientist, uh, we have identified different uh, genetic evidence uh, from different teams. That means, for example, we know bad woman Shi Zhen Li in Wuhan. Uh, Institute of, uh, of Virology, they have done something to modify the receptor binding domain. And also we have seen the furin Klinich site that was the work involving the uh, professor Li Fang based in Minnesota, University of Minnesota and his collaborators uh, in uh, New York Blood Center. And they are all the PLA connected scientists. And also there are other parts in the uh, in the uh, entity of spike protein was modified and which we believe that was part of work done by General Chen Wei in Military of China, uh, Academy of Military Medical Science. Uh, so there are so many uh, evidence show that they have done this kind of uh, modification. And then finally this, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, when we saw it from Wuhan, the change is totally around 11%. And 
And also at that time, because this is a weapon, and this is a top weapon for CCP government, you should not expect it is uh, just put into a lab without very careful management. And actually later, even based on our intelligence that right before the outbreak in Wuhan, there were military operation done by PLA has their code name involved into the use of this virus. And so anyway, when we say the virus happened in Wuhan, I can tell you, I don't think this is lab accident because when I did my investigation, I also reached to people who have connection in the Wuhan lab. And we know that Wuhan lab was safe at that time. There was no lab accident. No one got infected in certain lab accident. They have very good function, but the CCP government told them not to do much things to check the sequence of this virus because China want to downplay the role of that lab. And at that time, during mid-December, China government already knows the sequence of this virus, but they choose to hide it. Why? Because they want to wait. First, they want to wait to see the virus, whether they can cause a lot of damage. And also, uh, for example, they, they let it happen in Wuhan and later let it uh, go to America. But before they lock down, before they are forced to lock down, they even came to U.S. tell President Trump that nothing big deal, no human to human transmission in China. So that's how they intentionally hide it up. And also, it takes some time to let people little by little convinced by the nature origin theory. Uh, so that's why initially uh, they, they start to tell you this from the wet market. And also they want you to know there would be certain wild animal which is eaten by Chinese sold on, in, a, uh, in the wet market and then uh, cause the transmission. So I was the one at that time, they want to uh, get this evidence of wild animal. That is another story, but basically because my lab was the lab uh, first identified claim that civet cat was the nature uh, animal host for SARS-CoV-1 in 2003. So CCP thought if it is to do the same thing this time, that will be uh, very, uh, very convincing. And my boss, Liu Peng, also came to me in mid-January he showed me a picture, which is a small animal. He told me it's called raccoon dog. It's an animal like civet cat. And he wanted me to get him evidence that in Wuhan, people eat it and sell it. Uh, however, based on my investigation, we don't eat it and we don't sell it. So basically, this story is kind of filled. But that is actually part of CCP style to uh, force all this uh, narrative. And that's why later you see the day after I released uh, uh, the evidence of DC-45 and uh, pointed it to the PLA, the, within 24 hours, on 20th January, that woman Shi Jianli has to quickly submit her paper claim that they found something called RETG-13 from West China. Because China want you to believe this is from Wuhan wet market, to raccoon dog and then go back to a, uh, maybe some bad virus uh, lived in west of China. Totally, I mean, opposite to where they found the real backbone of this virus. And also, if you only focus on RATG-13, that is a virus in Yanji Pulse. We already analyzed that. And this is a fake virus which doesn't exist in the nature, but totally fake by the scientists in the lab. If you only believe on that one, then you will see only 4% difference between RITG-13 and the SARS-CoV-2. Then you will ignore over 7% of modification from the laboratories. And also you will ignore the People's Liberation Army's dominant role in this whole project. And the most thing is, China can claim Shi Jinping is a compromised scientist working with America. 
So American funded Wuhan lab, and then America is the real reason of the develop of this bioweapon. So that's why okay. in this, yeah, <laughs> it's very Finish complicated. That is why. Yes, I'm following you all the way. And that is why I got a million. I got a million questions, and and you've you've told the story in a very cohesive, coherent manner. But you were going to say that is why. I mean, that is why I keep telling people origin, and we need to know there are so many false theories outside to prevent you from the truth. So I have a million questions. So bear with me here. Why do U.S. officials, why are they so prone to be enthusiastic about these stories that you say are, are being uh, conveniently presented by the CCP? One thing is because your officials, I mean, I see investigators, they have to rely on the experts' opinions. And you know, virologists are a very small group. So China has already spent decades to do this kind of preparation. Before Xi Jinping, they start to prepare, and then Xi Jinping make it worse. The thing is, the scientists uh, can be compromised, and they also know. One thing is, China has found the weakness of the weapon convention and also the surveillance system. And also, they know that there's quite a big of the gray area for the technique development in biology. So they managed to learn your technology, and they also are uh, using this kind of academic exchange to build the relation with your scientists. Once the thing happened, your scientists definitely feel that they will be blamed for all the things. And at that time, if they work with CCP, they feel safe, and they even get more benefits. That's why they choose to go to that side that make me surprised in the beginning of the outbreak. And is it your contention that because of that the, this cozy relationship between the scientist here and the scientist there, is, is that the gain of function research? Is that that shared gain of function research that people seem to be afraid to admit to or afraid to acknowledge or whatever, whatever is going on? It's hard to tell, but is, is that what you're talking about? Uh, Something you can call it in a function technology, but actually many of the things you even don't. I mean, I, I'm the virologist. I won't say these are the uh, in a function technology, but they can be used for gain of function weaponize the virus. For example, I have known that uh, uh, Ralph Barrick from North Carolina University of Chapel Hill, he had delivered some humanized mouse to China. And I was in my Yen reports, we have analyzed those humanized ACE2 mouse as the ones to be used to develop the affinity between a human and the SARS CoV 2 virus. However, if you just talk about the humanized mouse technology, I won't say this is bad because we do need such of the technology to. So, so let me, let me, let me talk about, let me say what that is. So what, what you're saying is you've inserted human genes into mice, including the binding site for the spike protein, the ACE2 receptor, right? And so you could get the virus yeah. into the mice and then you, now my, one of my questions is, did they, in the ways the spike protein were modified, did it have specific biological objectives? In other words, did they know they were going to create things like the cytokine storms, like the COVID lung phenomenon. Is there something about the way the the virus was altered that would predict those sorts of biological pathologies? Yes, there are. That's why I said I listed in, in my Yen reports. I just listed the function with smoking gun evidence. It doesn't mean that's all functions. The functions I listed involve that one is receptor binding domain, especially as a very core part, we call it present the binding motif. That is a part for the virus to attach to human ACE2 uh, receptors. And they ma manage to modify it, make it really uh, close to the perfect uh, structure that can uh, bind your human ACE2 uh, receptor very well. And also they later use the humanized ACE2 mouse to get animal passage and that will get the virus know the in vivo how to adopt it to this kind of 
receptor and makes the affinity even better. And also from Kinevich side, I bet many people is familiar with this word now. That is uh, the recept uh, that is a uh, section you insert it into the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and can help the virus get access to your cells, uh, make it yeah. more efficient. And also there is another thing people ignore. It is E protein, the envelope protein. That part we won't say is same function, but I will say it maintains a function because uh, people really don't quite understand this protein. However, uh, based on study from my lab, we have known that during SARS-1, if you check the E protein, it's quite conservative. But if it's changed, even for several amino acids, you just see the virus could lose the capacity of amplification. And that is not good for them to make it as a weapon. So that's why there is something very interesting that the E protein in this virus maintains the 100% uh, identical to the Zhoushan bat coronavirus DC45. So I believe that is because uh, when they get the backbone DC45, they know this E protein could make this virus alive, could make it, this virus amplify well, and they don't want to lose this function after their uh, experiment in the labs. Then they purposely maintain this function. After they modify the other part, they just put this section back to the SARS-CoV-2. And that's why you have the virus with good amplific amplification capacity. Yeah. So uh, I, I understand what you're telling us. I, I'm I, I have a, just you a, gotta explain a, it to the rest of us. Well, that the virus can bind very efficiently, can get into cells very efficiently, can amplify, can multiply very efficiently, and that's what determines viremia has some impact, meaning the amount of virus circulating has amount some effect on the severity of illness, and so they could sort of predict then severity of illness. Now, one of the things that has sort of struck me is that there seems to be something about the spike protein that is causing endothelial injury and alveolar injury. And there's, it, it seems like as though that is mediated by the spike protein. A, is that true? Am I, am I correct? And B, if I am correct, what about vaccines that are built to create spike protein? How do we know, you know how much to give somebody without that causing problem? Yeah, so first, of course, spike protein can cause different damage. I mean, because that, uh, we have learned spike protein from SARS-1, and we know that SARS-1 spike protein already have the function like can uh, uh, cause a blood clot, can cause even ADE, antibody-dependent enhancement, and many other things. And also we have seen it in the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, like the anti, uh, uh, sorry, I forget how to pronounce it, the anti-SLE, uh, that kind of antibody, uh, which can Ant cause- Anti-phospholipid. Ant Antiphospholipid. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's what I yeah. sorry. I, so yeah. that is the one can cause the um, can cause. I can't say it in Chinese, so you're forgiven. Thank you. So that can <laughs> cause blood clot. That also can induce. Uh, also, you know the coronavirus like SARS one, SARS two. They can cause the cytokine storm. They can cause AD. They can cause a lot of problem. So it, and also there are some more problem with. I mean, we don't know more function. For example, as I said, I didn't mention NPD part from uh, spike protein, which is the other side opposite to uh, RBD. So this part is changed based on our examination. The thing is, we still don't quite sure about the function, and also we know that is a part uh, is related change. The, it could be related to the uh, bioweapon generals, and so we, the thing is. We still don't know how strong the damage spike pro uh, protein can cause to people. Then why do we need to put it to vaccine? This is not only about how much vaccine we should give people. This is dangerous. Once it's weaponized and before you quite understand this function, before you can attenuate this function, how could you deliver it to human purposely or even using mandatory policies? And that's what, okay, what I yeah. have been advocating from the beginning of the outbreak. Yeah, I, do, I don't want you to, uh, that's, I understand that, I, but I don't want to, that we get into controversy there, and I just really want to stay with the, the story as you understand it, not opinions so much, you know what I mean? 
Um, uh, and, and that's why sorry, I asked the question because it's. Go ahead, what? I'm not. Well, I'm not the one. Actually, I don't tell people uh, not use vaccine. I won't say that. I just will say no mandatory because for me, yeah. I mean, I know this would be side effect, but you have to know there are so many things have side effect. It's like people using opinion, uh, opinion uh, uh, ingredient in the drugs for painkiller, yeah. but in certain yeah. level of cancer, you have to use it. But I won't. Right. I will, uh, I'm definitely I against the mandatory policies. Yeah. Yep, I get you. I, I'm with you, and, and I would like some questions answered about some of the things we're seeing these days. But that's a it's a separate topic, and we can come back and talk about that topic sometime, you and I. But it's a separate yes. topic. Um, uh, I'm sort of overwhelmed by everything you've given us so far, Susan. What are you leaning in for? You, I'm over overwhelmed too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a, I'm just most of your my questions I had. Uh, you have answered as we were going along here. So my she question kind of touched I, on this, but was it, it, you think it was leaked on purpose? Like, well, okay. That is what I've, I have three questions. Okay? okay. One is, do you think they actually leaked it and foisted it on their own people in order to get over here? That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me initially. Um, sure. I did my investigation. The thing is first, we need to tell people a lot of details. We still don't know yet. And we have intelligence for something, but we also need more details. And the, but if you talk about lab accident, I can tell you I worked in such uh, biosafety level three laboratories, and I can tell you that if there is spillover or anything, at least in this lab, the colleagues will be noticed because you have to either isolate yourself or get the disinfection or whatever. But in Wuhan Institute of Virology, at that time, during the Wuhan outbreak in November, December, there was no this kind of uh, accident at all. And pe people work well uh, no, in the normal function. And the second thing is, when we talk about uh, release to human, we have seen the description in the uh, PLS document when they describe the novel uh, novel about weapon using coronavirus, they said for the, to optimize the function of this kind of bioweapon, you have to do the test using human. So release it into the community, especially in the place that totally like a uh, human uh, living and this kind of real community, this kind of environment will be the best way for you to get the uh, best function of this bioweapon finally. And for Wuhan things, what we can say is, I would say this is out of control because government didn't realize the transmissibility. They underestimate the transmissibility. But I would say that based on evidence I have now, it pointed out to they have at least using some real investment for the test and then because the high transmissibility is totally out of control. I remember the fake news articles where they said that the people inside the Wuhan clinic were sick. There was some stuff like there, that reported. There's I remember a there lot of crazy, crazy things. Yes, but uh, for example, they, they mentioned one uh, female named Wang Yanling, but that Wang Yanling actually was uh, in other places in China. And also, I can tell you just based oh. on the that one evidence is Wang Yanling's photo is empty in the website. But you know, in China, this kind of website or system can be very careless. Uh, maybe a student stays there for three years, they even forget to update the photo. So this is really mm. not the evidence. Got it. Is there anything about the way the spike protein has been? adulterated or, or changed to give it the capacity to evolve in dangerous ways? You know, this has been a rapidly evolving virus. Is, is that something man-made or is that just a convenience of the backbone? Uh, could, could you explain evolve what? In other words, it seems like the, the virus itself, in particular the spike protein, is evolving very quickly in unpredictable ways. Yeah. Is that yes. something? Is that something built into the man-made properties, or is that something of the backbone or the, of the virus? I think that's a 
one of the reasons they choose coronavirus to build this right. type of the novel bioweapon. Right. This is not something right. you can decide. Scientists really don't quite understand, but one reason is because uh, coronavirus is very simple, just a single string RNA, uh, and coronavirus is very short, only three, uh, 30,000 uh, um, nuclear, uh, nuclear, acid, nuclear acid. And so that's why it's easy to modify it. And China has spent a lot of money, lot, um, so many years to search novel virus from animals. They have built a huge database and then they can mm. establish the uh, computer model, computational model to help them to change certain parts. And also the other part is based, the other functions they want is based on the character of the coronavirus itself. Interesting. Now, I think I heard you say somewhere that you think there was a second release of virus. Like maybe Omicron was a second release or something. Did I hear that correctly uh, or was that, did I mishear that? Uh, when we talk about Omicron, that is something tricky. We are working on that now. I mean, uh, basically, I mean the Omicron outbreak in China because China government now uh, claims that there are only Omicron variant and they claim that there is nothing you have to worry about. However, what we have seen in China really uh, controversial, not uh, controversial, is opposite to what CCP government described. And if you want to examine the, uh, the real reason of this outbreak, uh, it's not like the government. Uh, claimed only because they lift the zero COVID policy or because of the vaccine coverage. First, the zero COVID policy doesn't mean they deal the citizens into the vacuum place and then keep their, like the babies, protect them. People need to go out to do the PCR testing even during lockdown, right? Crowded together. Mm -hmm. And also the lockdown is not continuously for three years everywhere. It's kind of for Shanghai for over two months, Xinjiang for three months, and other time it's kind of randomly, uh, like in a shift happened in different places all over the country. So you can't say people are so vulnerable, especially when we start to say the uh, this time the higher um, the, the the higher high death toll and also the very severe symptoms compared to the Omicron symptoms overseas. And also uh, we see that uh, there are uh, the, so many, so many feedback from uh, our audience that the whole family overnight got infected, even they didn't go everywhere. A lot of things we can't explain. And so well, we also check the coverage of the vaccine in China. Although they use the made in China inactive vaccine, but the coverage is very high. Government said 1.4 million people have already received over 3.4 billion uh, vaccines. So basically, almost three times people averagely get two, uh, over 19% get two doses already. And this time, even you go back to 2020, at that time, people really don't have much immunity against the coronavirus. The situation is even not this terrible. So that's why we have to be very suspicious. One is the timing, and the other thing is we need to go back to say what CCP scientists, especially PLA-related scientists, have been done in the past three years. And we have seen that, uh, I can't tell more, but my team is working on that. What I can share with you is we have seen that China government has done a lot of things to study the immune escape very end. Just, and then that is actually the technology easy for gain of function to use to enhance the uh, the capacity of the weaponized virus. And also we have seen China government, although they stop people to do any PCR testing in hospitals, but they insist on the variants in China. It's just the Omicron uh, as we know. And then China CDC also predict, they tell people at the end of December, there will be the super immune escape variant come out to the world. And at that time, China would have the best treatment, which is already in the 
clinical trial. For example, one model antibody China government said it will uh, go to the market since uh, until March 2023. So these are all the things we need to be very aware of. And also, I uh, during my research, I also try to warn the other countries to prepare for that. Don't let it hit your country again. We really don't want to go back to this kind of mandatory policy period. We don't want to give them pretext to do that. How do we avoid it? I think the good thing is at this moment, based on our feedback, although a majority of Chinese people get infected and the white lung symptom is also uh, quite high, uh, we have seen that if you can get drug, especially for army treatment, uh, the fit kind of good. So I have shared our audience about several protocols from FLCCC, from Dr. Zilenko, from Dr. Peter McConnell. And uh, among these drugs for Chinese citizens, I rem uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine is the uh, one come, uh, easy for them to get because it's kind of OTC in China. So they have took that. And also they have told me that they use that as the symptom get uh, kind of uh, attenuated or they even just feel recovered. As, but I mean, at that time also China government even don't want people to get the basic fever medicine or painkiller. Government holds the medicine and don't distribute it to people. And also why? we have no, yeah, that's also I want to ask my government, why don't you let your people to get treatment. Even majority of medical staffs are sick and they have to, I mean, bear aid to go to work to save people. The death toll is huge in China now. And the thing is, uh, we also talk about the paranoid and uh, we know that in China, this drug is not in the market, but somehow some people can manage to get it from other countries. Some feedback shows that uh, paranoid is also kind of uh, helpful for the people, especially when there is no uh, other problem. So we would say so I want to make sure you I want to make sure you heard you the, the, heard you. You say there's a monoclonal antibody coming. Is that true in March or something? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. China. I also checked. Okay. Uh, not only China CDC claim, also news they have claimed. Okay. And Paxlovid is that what you're talking about? That they're getting their hands on Paxlovid. Uh, the is, Paxlo, I mentioned Paxlovid is because in China, we also get feedback. Some high level, high ranking, maybe CCP family or rich family managed to get it. And this also kind of helpful, especially in the early stage. So I right, want right. to help people. We have different choices like cheap drugs, uh, yeah. also expensive but medicines. You have to prepare it. Because the thing is, if this is immune escape, but this drug is kind of wide, a uh, broad spectrum antivirus. So for the mechanism, this could work for people. Although they it's they not do medical. work. They really, I, I, I prescribed a lot of packs, but it really works. The problem with it is there's a lot of rebound from it. I want to bring in another yeah. scientist. Uh, I'll just call him Entropy, for it seems to be his nickname. Um, you're an Entropy, you'll have to spend some enthalpy and unmute yourself. Uh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, guided entropy. Thank you, uh, Dr. Drew. And um, a quick couple questions. If the conclusion is um, that this is indeed obviously um, uh, at least a leak, if not intentional, um, as we're going down the questioning of why would they do that to their own people, mm. Do they have something already uh, ready to go? And that would make sense that they would. And so we're, now we're in this discussion kind of reaching that point. Um, and, and so if this thing is coming out in March, as it sounds like that's the case with this antibody. So it sounds like they either learned. I mean, it's not hard to create an antibody right. that can match. So that's a very quick thing. But, but manufacturing, quickly. I'm sure manufacturing is no small matter. But yes, you could do it quickly and manufacture it. Yep. Right. So, so we're still stuck with, was it an intentional uh, release or is this just a new variant that, that evolved in, the, in, in what we call now the wild? Um, and, and so, you know, I, I think we still need to stick with that not being for sure, because mm -hmm. if they just found that out there, it's quick to sequence that 
put mm-hmm. together an antibody and, and, and that's ready to go. Mm-hmm. And most likely we knew that uh, several years ago, you know, it looks like Moderna had already patented some of the antibody sequences uh, potentially, I think, if I remember correctly, used in, in, in their version. So, so if it is the case that we know that this is out there, it's not hard to be ready for something. Um, you know, if we're already using these humanized ACE2 receptors, these new spike proteins we're playing with, no, and, and we, we know have, that that's a potential we have, risk. We have a lot of antivirals coming. We have, you know, there's a lot of treatments coming. So, in a sure. in a weird way, if this was their let me put it this way, Dr. Yan. If this was their strategy, they kind of screwed up because we're going to be prepared. We're getting treatments in order. They they didn't take over our society. You know what I mean? The evidence is they sort of it was sort of seemed very haphazard. You know, if this was a systematic attack, it wasn't very systematic. Now maybe it was a trial run. Maybe this was a war game. I don't know. Um, but what what do you say to that? First, y'all definition for success is different as CCP's definition for success. Uh, American success means boom, I wipe it out and it's clean now. For CCP is I make you weaker and weaker, destroy you little by little, and I have more chance at that time I can uh, develop and then we become little by little even equal and then I use other ways to uh, finally make you weak, sick like this. So when we talk about, I just want to answer a little bit that uh, our uh, scientist has mentioned intentional or not. I think I need to emphasize that I I believe that it's intentionally come out of the lab because it is in the lab, it is in the strict uh, protocol uh, control the lab and surveillance the lab. When it come out, it has to be intentional. And based on the response from CCP government, it is intentional. And the thing is intentional coming out is for trial or for attack and the field and all it is intentional go out to uh, do something else. These are the things we are still looking for the very details. And also when we talk about uh, the, we talk about the monoantibody and the immune escape, right? The, the thing is, this is, this can be the way uh, as a success or not success. But if you imagine it in the weapon system, it's basically like, like you develop the missile defense system, they develop new missile, and then you have more defense. So this is a competing uh, kind of phase. And if you use the virus as a weapon, then you also need to have this kind of thinking. So that's why when we say that they study the immune escape variant, and also at the same time, they study the monoantibody, and then they claim there will be future uh, Especially that they have the top uh, scientists who can predict the immune escape variant in the past uh, uh, three years, and now they claim that there will be the uh, new immune escape super strain, but they have monoantibody when all the other monoantibody and vaccines all over the world will be ineffective. You, you really need to be aware of CCP's this kind of words. And when we talk about why they hurt the Chinese people, the thing is, for your, I mean, for Americans, I know most of you will ask me this question. But for Chinese people, we will never ask why our government won't hurt me. We know our government every year put trillions of dollars just to maintain the stability. What means maintain the stability? Means domestically, they pay it to law enforcement team. And this team just need to be obedient to CCP government. And when anyone want to tell something government don't like or do anything government don't like, even it's legally, but government feel unhappy, then they treat you as an unstable factor. And at that time, the funding go to the law enforcement team will be used to deal with you. And if you check the government, like they have so many ways to treat our Chinese people. For example, if you are a journalist who reports something government doesn't like, you will be sent to the mental hospital. You will be defined as a, a psycho patient and even get false treatment unless you keep quiet. And also in our history for past 70 years under communist control, government never care of, about Chinese people. Recently, there is a word called human man. That means in China, they develop human like using the man. So you are just some consumable 
uh, resources for the government. This is very anti-human system, and this is very evil. So we never question that. Yeah, you, you that's what I the next thing I wanted to talk about with you was sort of this cultural political issue that we in the United States don't seem to understand that the, the history of that last 70 years was about collectivization and sacrifice. And that's that sacrifice and the destruction of millions of lives was considered glorious, not unfortunate, yeah. not disgraceful, but glorious. And so the idea that they would do that again is sort of the glory the, for the glory of the country. Yes, for example, now, you know, one thing we, we can say for China, why this outbreak happened now, we need to assume the timing. And the timing, I can tell you, is very, very suspicious, right after the white, uh, white paper revolution. And this revolution is historic because this is the first time in mainland China, citizens dare to stand up uh, in multiple places and to call for freedom powerful and CCP and uh, Xi Jinping stepped down. And this never happened and the government even doesn't know how to handle it uh, for a short while. And then later we say that immediately everywhere have the outbreak come out. We have received the feedback from east to west, from the small village to the big cities. They said it's all kind of overnight from maybe 7th to 10th December, the whole family gets sick, the whole village gets sick, and the high fever, pain, and people even can die in 20, 12 hours just after the symptom. These are all very unusual. But we also know that at that time, American government House Intelligence Committee has uh, issued one report, pointed out that COVID-19 virus uh, is mm, uh, related to the bioweapon program in China, and the IC is dumping this evidence, dumping this evidence. And we know that also makes CCP very scary because they know once Americans know the truth, they will definitely treat CCP and Xi Jinping as enemy of mankind and hold them accountable. However, at that time, if suddenly outbreak come out, they could save a lot of time and people will say, oh, how could uh, country makes their citizens sick, then so maybe the, the, the government is innocent. And then this is a way for CCP to earn their time. They can go lobby, they can go out to compromise other people. They have a lot of things they can do. And finally, do you think you had, because you were a part of this system most of your life, do, do you think you had some sort of an awakening? And what I, I still don't see other than the uprising in Hong Kong, what was that? What was those moments like for you when you started coming to understand some of these things that that I I wasn't raised where you were raised, and I'm having trouble believing. Uh yes. So the final uh, moment of my uh, awakening definitely come from Hong Kong movement, but initially, I mean that has to be little by little. At least uh, you have to know this country, uh, this government is not as good as it described. You should be suspicious about the government. And I have this feeling because one thing is my grandparents, they suffered from cultural revolution, but then they told me some of this story and I read a lot when I was young. So I know this, there has been so many uh, disasters happened in China under CCP's ruling. And also uh, when I work as a intern doctor in the medical school, I have seen how it works in the medical system. It is also CCP controlled. And when they want you to lie, you have to lie. For example, the, there was some, uh, some accident happened and there are injuries sent to hospital and some of them deaths, but government will just minimize the number. Even there are 100 deaths, government tell only one death in the news. Then even you involve into this kind of treatment, you know the fact you have to keep silent. So all these things make me realize this is a system full of lies, cheating, and also anti-human. I don't like it. And I moved to Hong Kong. I thought I got the place I want. I feel free there. However, when they come to destroy Hong Kong, my life is totally changed. And I see how shameless this government can treat their 
citizens. Hong Kong people are also their citizens. But how could they just beat them? They just make them disappear. I see the young protesters go out and they just want the basic uh, human rights from the government. But then the next day you will see naked young people uh, funded uh, from the sea, from the mountain, or from the uh, under the building. And the police will claim they committed suicide. And these are all the, I mean, all the lies. You can't believe that. And also you see the senior people come out. Senior people, I mean, over 70, even 80 years old. They come to the street. They told people, we can do nothing, but we can slow down this place to let those students have more time to escape. We were, when we were young, we didn't realize the nature of CCP. So we let it grow up. And then now, we, when we get old, we have to do something to protect these people. So these are all the things that make me cry at that time. We see everyone, it just has a, compared to the whole regime, everyone only has very little power. But as what Hong Kong people said, the water, we are like a drop of water. When we all go together, this is river and it can be ocean. The power is so incredible. And I learned a lot from the whole moment. I'm inspired by all these people. I admire all of them. And that's why uh, when I meet this whole investigation, when I say what happened, I know what I can do. And I know I cannot work with this system to let it happen. So uh, basically, I mean, this is the whole progress of my change. I feel like we, we, what do they call it? R ran the cycle, single, double, triple home run that we ran the full cycle of your story. Did we miss anything? What kind of cycle? What, what else do you want to know? <laughs> no, I, did we miss anything? Is there a major topic that I neglected to ask you about? Is there Wait. anything you want no, people I to know about that I didn't uh, ask you? I see many people uh, just want to know about like when I came to US, what happened to me? And also because you may check, if you check my name, even Wikipedia, basically I'm a uh, conspiracy theorist. A theorist. Uh, I just want to take several examples to tell you how it happened. One of my colleagues in US, US um, I mean, colleague uh, since I escaped to US, and uh, they won't help me to edit my Wikipedia page. And then they found some uh, senior people who had a lot of experience in that. And then they checked my Wikipedia. They realized there are at least 70 active accounts staying there. Whatever you change, they will change it back to the negative comment on me. So that means they don't want you to know any uh, positive thing about me. And they also make up the lies to, to discredit me. And this is also. Uh, what it takes the advantage of the algorithm. So uh, based on that, basically when you check, like Google is, Google searching is also kind of manipulated because we have our people uh, inside Google. They told that uh, especially the CCP has controlled the Chinese part of the Google searching and whatever you search me, you, there won't be other thing come out except, except for the negative, uh, reports. And also, uh, it's like my Twitter account was suspended. Also, maybe you don't know, my Yen report are also uh, kind of withdrawn by CCP. Uh, in, September, uh, in July 2021, a CCP agent who pretend to be the dissident in U.S. Uh, Mao school, Guo Wangui, hey, when I realized that he is an agent, and I also reported him to the IC, he claimed he will make me disappear, and also uh, my reports disappeared from the world. So they have first tried to withdraw my Yen report from Zinado, but then we repost it. And then they also CCP write email to ask those uh, websites now to publish my reports, uh, including ResearchGate, which is an academic, uh, just as a, a social website. 
So they have to withdraw one of my report, which pointed to the unrestricted bow weapon. And so also they work with those compromised scientists. They have created a lot of uh, fake uh, claim to attack Yen report. And I think people should read, especially the third Yen report, because once you read whatever those kind of attacks from scientists on MIT review or by John Hopkins or by the New, New York Times, CNN, you will find the answer, point to point answer to tell you how they twist my evidence in the Yen reports and create a space to implant their false narrative. And that is not difficult for people to understand. I wrote the three Yen report to let everyone who can read English report and if you read the uh, if you are enthusiastic to understand the origin of COVID, you can go to verify by yourself. You don't need to believe me or not. Based on the reference, check whether the reference are real, whether the smoking gun evidence are like the recipe from your grandma, where you eat the cake, you know, oh, this is my grandma's cooking, right? And you check the connections between all these foreign Chinese PLA scientists, whether these things happen, you will know what happened. And I hope everyone can let more people understand the origin, because if we don't focus on the origin, we can never solve the vaccine problem or other uh, public health policy problem, or we cannot prevent the future pandemic. Thank you for that. Caleb or Susan, do you guys have any other questions? Welcome to America. She's been here a little while. She's been here a little while. <laughs> yeah, I, but I see how she can, she has to keep fighting for the reality of who she is and how we, it still happens here. It's, well, we, it, well, that's what she's saying. She's saying the, the Western countries learn from the CCP and at least for whatever reason. Or maybe it's coming be, from the CCP. Right. We don't know. We don't know. Or, but it's certainly, we have now evidence of what's going on in social media. What really, what really stuck out to me and just looking at it from a historical uh, perspective and how, you know, germ warfare would work is how she said how it, it kind of happens slowly. Like you don't really see it coming. And then it's not till you look back and you realize, you know, oh, gee, this is killing off our young men that are, you know, of fighting age in the war, or whatever, you know, you just, that's something that just stood out to me as how sneaky it is, how cunning they are and how it, maybe, how the, maybe. the, the germ takes decades to really slow us down. And that's what I'm feeling. And I I'm have a, I have a question on the chat here that says, ask Jian why freedom of information request request were put into the uk.irish.gov but no proofs provided. Do you understand? I don't quite understand that question. Do you? What UK freedom information? I'll read it again. Please. I don't. It it didn't make sense to me either. But I'll read it again. Why did the freedom of information request put into UK.Irish.gov, but no proofs provided? I'm just uh, asking. I don't know what that means. I don't quite understand this question. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't know what that's all about either. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Connection, you're gonna have to, yeah, okay. Uh, and I, you know, we don't wanna be giving people fear. You know, the no. whole idea behind this is to impart no. fear, you know, a, to be a, aware on yeah. the public. Or we're, yeah. we're no, no, you no. know, we're not saying, oh gee, it's gonna get worse or whatever. It's. But, well, well, let me ask this, uh, uh, Dr. Yen. Do, the fact that our government chose fear as a po public health policy, was that also from the uh, CCP, do you think? Uh, actually, I don't think that the government is just, I mean, when we talk about what American government doing, and if just simply compared to CCP government, that's actually very uh, unfair because uh, what CCP government has done is uh, basically now, especially now, we know Xi Jinping is the emperor in China. So basically that just reflects Xi Jinping's idea of thoughts and they just push it to the all city, uh, all the society. Got it. But in America, Got when it. your government has to do something, I mean, because people have vote, so
So especially when people have the right to say no, like what Freedom Caucus has done recently in the Congress. So American people always can choose to say no and to further discuss or change some policies. So this is the very difference in America. And actually that is most advantage in American system. And so I would say that if you think your government learned something from China and just uh, you need to express your opinions, as Susan just said, it's not to create fear, it's to build your courage because we only need two things, truth and courage. And you have to know that God endorses everyone your rights. And this is forbidden in China, but this is protected by constitution in America. So also that's why CCP tries the best to cheat you and they try to change your mind. That's why you won't know what you can uh, talk to uh, discuss with your government to protest for. But now we know what we need. We definitely don't want such tyrannic, uh, tyrannism, that kind of system. So just uh, forget our fear because we have no other way to go. We can only briefly stand up and uh, speak out. Well, thank you for that. Those are two words that I, I've been speaking, been coming out of my mouth a lot lately for the first time in many years. I, the word courage is suddenly very, very, very important and something that I took for granted, which was that the pursuit of the truth was something that everybody was interested in. I, I, that, has been, that has been a foggy priority in recent years, I'd say. But I thank you for being with us. Um, you know, it, it's been a fascinating journey to go on with you, and I hope people will follow you. The, the Twitter handle is at Dr. Lee, D-R-L-I-M-E-N-G-Y-A-N. One. One. The main so you're back on Twitter. So now you can Twitter. voice your opinion again, like all the other doctors that we've had back on the show. And even our own Dr. Kelly Victory is back on Twitter. And we just really appreciate that you came on the Twitter spaces and perked through his ears. Uh, he, he heard you say something. And he was like, I have to get her on this show. I have to hear more. I have to hear. I, I, she knows what she's talking about. She's been there and I need to hear more. And, and you, you've delivered exactly that. Really appreciate and uh, just want to remind our audience there are hundreds of the uh, uh, imposters on Twitter and we just need to check the one with over uh, 150,000 followers. That's the only account uh, of mine. <laughs> okay, well, good. Hopefully today there'll be more than that even. All right. Uh, well, I hope you'll stay in touch with us and give us any updates if something new comes across your desk or you have new uh, findings. I hope you'll join us again. And thank you for thank your bravery. You so much. Thank you. Well, God thank bless you. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're inspiring. Um, so there we go. She did not disappoint. It was exactly kind of what I'm I thought. I'm very proud of you. Proud of me? Yeah. Because why? Because I thought this would be a good, interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sure there's alternative opinions, and I'd like to hear those as well. And it, there's a lot of weird stuff going on on Twitter. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I can't really concentrate on it yet, so I'll try to make sense of people that have all, alternative points of view. Uh, but uh, certainly she is inspiring, right? Do we all agree yeah. on that at least, that this is an inspirational oh, yeah. person and an, ex and an exceedingly smart person? That was the other thing I got. This is a highly trained scientist and clinician. This woman knows what she's talking about. And so we should, it's the kind of person we should at least be listening to. Well, I feel like China's looming, and we need to not let that happen. We looming. Need to fight back. Like they've been, I mean, well, at the listen, very, at the very they least, shut down the whole world. Right. At the wasn't very least, just they us. hoodwinked our public health official. Now, I can blame our public health officials, but I can blame them for hoodwinking them. This They hoodwinked them. And then we went through, we, our kids, our children were the damaged. The entire world. Our children were damaged. Schools were closed for two years because of that shit. And if nothing else bothers you, let that sink in a little bit. They hoodwinked us. We have a generation of kids now with mental health issues, developmental issues, educationally behind. Maybe that's exactly what they intended. They got it. Well, well done. So, any event. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, interesting, interesting. How many times have I said it's a communist plot? Tomorrow, tomorrow. Are you? Do you feel? Do you feel vindicated? Do you feel just a little bit? So, so. Do you, I'm not. I'm not. It, it still could have been an accident. I, listen, you been, but, always are very moderate about everything. Yes, I, but. I, I don't know. I if you look at the history, it hasn't changed since Mao came in. No, I get that part. China, That's it part just doesn't miss. change. And like I was thinking in my head about the the guy that killed those girls in Idaho mm -hmm. and how the 
I can't remember the guy that's name who was on yesterday, but um, Gilliam, how Jonathan he said Gilliam. there's like a power thing. How yes. how they how these psychopaths have a Dominance. they want to dominate, and this is the same kind of thing. I mean, they kill off their people left and right. They don't. It doesn't bother them. So tomorrow, we have Dr. Paul Alexander in here. And Paul Alexander was in the room when the social distancing was invented and the distance of social distancing was uh, con con concocted. Uh, and when he told us that story last time, I was in shock and I didn't ask a lot of follow-up questions. I want to hear my, my whole interview with him at the beginning of the show tomorrow is going to be, I want to hear every detail of what happened in that room. Who were the players? What were they thinking? How did they come to this craziness? And then why did they stay behind it when they knew there was no evidence for it? So Paul Alexander, tomorrow, we're not having a show Thursday or Friday. We'll be out of town. And uh, thank you for being here today. We appreciate you guys on the restream. I've been trying to follow you guys. And, of course, sort of the, the Rumble We have rant. a couple of good other guests coming up. Dr. Paul Hatfield with, yep. Hatfield with um, Kelly on the 18th and also Dr. David Gartler, two great guests. And Ryan Cole coming back. And, and then, uh, yes. And we have, uh, again, you guys on the Rumble Rants we've been watching, as we always do. And, uh, maybe Drew will come up with somebody else by next Tuesday. You never know. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I, I just thought that we'll, we'll bring her back, too, if there's more information. Actually, I'm having a tooth pulled next Tuesday, so uh, I may not call be her here. Show. All right. we'll, we'll call her show. We'll do a caller show. I need to do some caller shows, too. because we, I can maybe make sure lots, the sound works and then call back into bed. Ca catch up on here with you all, and we'll do just calls coming up uh, probably next week. That's probably when we'll do it, right? Let's quickly look at the schedule next week, if you don't mind. Um, next week is is Tuesday your appointment? Yeah, so yes. Tuesday we can do a caller show. Okay, <laughs> let's let's sort of organize a caller show on Tuesday. All right, we'll see you all tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific time. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. And I went to a strip club with Annie, and that guy knows how to navigate a Jesus strip club. This, every, every time with this mother, I like put my hand up, this man, I yeah. put my hand up. Because I, I he took knew the him. hand signal. He, I knew <laughs> the hand signal. And so, wait, what's the hand signal? Is there a thing you do like... Yeah, no, you ready? So, yeah. so I wanted a stripper to come over to give one of them a lap dance. I think yeah. it, was your, it was your wife. And so I said, come here. That's the <laughs> and hand that, signal. That and he was like, what is yeah. this weird <laughs> form of <laughs> waving I've never seen? Exactly. The same signal you'd use for more bread, please. Or can we get some water or the right. chair? What a dark drill. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, be all right. Man.